Oh. Going live. Hi everyone, how are you? Um, exciting day, a lot of news stuff today. <laughs> um, thanks to those uh, those folks that were at the uh, the testing on the on the green this morning. We had a ton of people show up. Um, actually, Director Bond, when you have a sec, it would be great to give share the, the numbers of people that got tested. If I'm not sure if Dr. Murphy can share that with with you via text. Um, just a couple updates. Uh, so we have a. a, a over the course of the, um, the virus, we have a, a total of 2,420 New Haven residents who have uh, tested positive, and we have 104 fatalities. Um, as folks may have seen, uh, we are partnering with Yale New Haven Hospital to move the site that they currently have on Sargent Drive that they're using for testing, and was the first testing site in New Haven to utilize the old Strong School uh, that's at 130 Orchard Street. Um, we're very grateful for the partnership, not only with the hospital, but with New Haven Public Schools to make that happen. Um, the, the site, uh, we don't have the hours and the day that it will uh, start to operate. It's still a little bit in the future. Um, but the site will, uh, if you think about the other site on Sargent Drive, it managed a lot of people driving through. This new site will also have both drive-through and also have the ability for people to walk to the site. That it needs to be very clear. A lot of times when we say it's a walk-up site, people think they can just walk in without an appointment. They will need an appointment for this site. Um, but people don't need a car to get tested. Um, so, and, and also for the press information, the Strong School has not been used as a school. Uh, for a certain amount of time. And so it, this is not a, uh, although it's a school property, it is not a, um, a utilized public school. We don't have a long-term timeline as to, uh, you know, if an end date for the use of that site, but we expect it to be used for some, some time. And we're happy to par partner with the hospital to make sure that uh, they're able to continue doing significant amounts of testing in the city. Uh, the only other update I have is that um, on the nursing home side, we've uh, working with Dr. Murphy again. So uh, Fairhaven Health has tested Mary Wade a number of times, as people are aware. Uh, working with Dr. Murphy, we've tested Regal Care and Advanced Nursing. And yesterday, I believe it was, we tested all of Leeway, the residents at Leeway. Um, and we're working on a date to test residents in the towers as well. And this is all in partnership with Dr. Murphy. Um, very, we're very happy with the results of uh, the work today on the New Haven Green and our partnership with the proprietors. We had a ton of people out testing. There was a line all day, which is an indication that people um, are really interested in getting testing. I saw a lot of uh, city staff online and we encouraged, I sent out an email to city staff encouraging them to get tested and want to just thank the proprietors and uh, thank Dr. Murphy and our team for making that happen. Director Bond, do you have anything you'd like to add? No? And New Haven Public Schools, do you have anything you'd like to add or are you just here for uh, questions? Uh, Dr. Tracy's oh. muted. Oh, here for any particular question that may be asked and just be a face on the site. All right, great. So I'll hand it over to the press for questions. Go ahead, Paul. Oops. Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's well. Um, you know, those nursing home numbers are interesting. They, they're not the same at every nursing home. Any theories about why Mary Wade has so many more people dying and getting sick? Dr. Bond, any theories? Yeah, so I, I don't want to make speculations or have, you know, the unknown theories. One of the things that uh, we we want to emphasize is that we, you know, we are working closely with all of the nursing homes. Um, there is a fluctuation of, you know, of positive cases at each of them. Um, you know, they, um, they determined each site um, really had progressive testing and, you know, point prevalence survey testing at different 
point in periods of when things happen. So I, you know, I don't want to speculate, uh, but we do know that each of the sites are making every effort to ensure that they're, you know, working closely with the Department of Public Health, as well as well as our local health epidemiologists, um, to ensure the safety of the residents. And the reason I ask is that our readers are saying, you know, the Regal Care had such a bad record with the state. They weren't doing things they were supposed to under law. We get flooded with complaints from patients' families, from employees. No one feels safe. And then at Mary Way, they seem to do everything right. All we hear about from neighbors, patients, employees is how carefully they're trying to protect everybody. So our readers say, so why is it they have so many more people? Is it just a matter of fate? A nursing home worker might have inadvertently brought it in and then it's hard to contain? It's really, it's really hard to determine who brought it in because you also have people that are, have outpatient services. So you can have patients coming in from a dialysis appointment, for example, and can come in. So it's really hard to determine whether it's a staff or a patient. The good thing is that testing is going to be happening on an ongoing basis. And there were complaints early on of every single nursing home, to believe it or not. Um, so I think equally there were complaints from all of the nursing homes. Um, and I think it's just because it's a sensitive um, population. I mean, I myself have a, um, a family member in a nursing home. And so we all care, uh, you know, in a great deal to making sure that our uh, family and caregivers and staff are all, you know, being provided the most equitable care possible and also the proper PPE for staff to be able to deliver services. Thank you. I, I have a speculation too that I probably shouldn't share because I'm just speculating, but my just sense enough. is that the, the, as far as the fatalities, Mary Wade's been pretty high, but the, I was just scanning the ages of people at Mary Wade and they're very, very old, you know, people in their nineties, a lot of people that are, um, that are in their nineties, late eighties, and even a few people that are a hundred and the other sites, people are younger. Um, it doesn't quite ex explain that it appears that Mary Wade has more cases in addition to more fatalities, but their fatalities have been, you know, the number's been pretty high, and I would suspect that it's just much, much more vulnerable population of people in their 90s. Thank you. But again, that's speculation. It's a good question. Thank you for sharing it. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, hi, I just wondered if you had any reaction um, uh, Marta Borgstrom was asked about potentially increasing the amount of money that uh, the hospital will send to Yale, to New Haven, I mean, and um, pretty much said no. You know, everybody's in trouble, the cities are in trouble, we're in trouble. Um, and um, she just had some advice that going forward, uh, things are going to be different and we should all look forward. We should all what? Look forward to kind of a, a new um, way of doing things. Just a very generalized comment. Yeah, I'm not sure what the last part of that means, but um, so first of all, we're deeply appreciative of all the work the hospital has done uh, during this time uh, and the partnership that we have had with the hospital to increase testing, uh, to make sure that um, there's not as many barriers to, make, uh, to helping support New Haven residents. Um, I would say look at the math. This is one year and this has been a difficult year for everyone, including the hospital. I would note that the hospital just got over $100 million from the federal government in aid. We got three. Uh, and if you look at the revenues that the hospital has made, the gross income that the hospital has made over the last few years, it is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And so uh, while I, I understand that this may look like a difficult year for the hospital, this, this is a difficult financial year for the hospital. We have to look at the big picture and uh, underscore that um, entities that are uh, taking in a significant amount of profit uh, should be helping uh, ensure that the city that they are located in uh, have the um, support that we need to uh, address issues around income inequality that are intricately connected with health outcomes in individuals. And if you look at one thing that's been uh, uh, very clear about this crisis, comorbidities that are linked to people's economic status are causing 
more deaths. And if we start to address the income inequality by having other partners that have the capacity to contribute more to the community, we will help reduce the amount of the, of the scale of health problems in our community that uh, is both the ethical thing to do, but also would help the hospital uh, on its mission to improve the health of the, uh, the regional community. In short, they should be contributing more. Have you had discussions with them on this or ongoing discussions or I, I asked um, the alders also and it doesn't sound like the leadership has had discussions, but they may. So I had uh, in the lead up to uh, when my team and I introduced our uh, budget to the Board of Alders on March 1st, many uh, lively dialogues with uh, Marna and her team regarding um, my strong feeling that the hospital needed to contribute more to help with address the economic challenges of the city. Um, I have uh, intentionally put those questions aside during the COVID-19 crisis because now is the time for us to work together and partner to ensure the health of the community. And so the strong school partnership is just an example of that where uh, the hospital needed support in finding another site uh, because they needed to uh, implement some changes to the site that they are using right now. And we said, yes, we will make this happen. Uh, we're not gonna put up any barriers. Uh, we wanna be partners with you because that's the right thing to do for the community at this time. So that initiative came from, from them. I mean, they wanted to uh, essentially rebuild that site the new clinics yeah so the, the hospitals plan for quite some time uh, to uh, uh, to change the site that the, they're currently um, located that, that the testing site is currently at and so they need an, an, a, a separate site for for uh, to continue the testing uh, work that they're doing and the strong school site is an appropriate site for that because of its uh, proximity to the hospital, uh, its proximity to Route 34, um, and some of the logistical nature of the site, the just layout of the site and such. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Michael. Can I ask a non-healthcare uh, related question? Go for it. Thanks. Um, at, I guess it's six o'clock today, the Community Development Committee, the Board of Alders is going to be holding a hearing on the Wynn Stanley 101 College Street project, and I, I guess taking public testimony on that. Um, I don't think I've actually heard you say much about that project. Um, and I wondered simply if you'd thought much about that and been talking to a lot of people about that and sort of what your kind of overall disposition toward that project was because it's potentially a pretty transformational thing. I, I'm a big believer in the project. Uh, I'd encourage you to tune in tonight. There's been um, uh, some changes around the project that are, uh, will create some challenges to our being able to implement it in the, um, uh, in the exact nature that we initially anticipated. Um, I, I don't wanna get into more details. Mike Piscatelli will be sharing that this evening. Um, but the, the vision of this project to undo a highway and to re-knit the community together that was destroyed decades ago uh, and to do so in a way that uh, increases tax revenue, utilizes land that um, currently is um, contributing to pollution and, um, and dividing a community from downtown. Uh, that vision is something that I find inspiring and um, and I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to accomplish this. I've also been very uh, pleased to, um, to know that uh, Carter Wynn Stanley has been um, a solid partner. And even though we're facing pretty, uh, pretty challenging times as far as economic uh, uncertainty goes, uh, Carter Wynn Stanley has, has been sticking with the project and is working with us to see it to fruition. Uh, we will indeed be following that, so thank you. Yep. Any other questions? 
Go ahead, Mary. Can you elaborate at all on what the challenges are? I mean, it seemed, no, it seemed like pretty smooth going the last couple of times it came up for a public um, discussion. I just, I prefer for Mike to um, share, share the details on it tonight. All right, okay, maybe, maybe something on the budget. I, I know it's only been, I guess, a day, seems forever, but on the- It felt like an eternity. <laughs> the passage of the budget and what changes gonna have to be made. I, you know, we're, we're um, so the the board of the finance committee passed a three point eight million dollar cut, right, to the budget. In addition to the uh, to the city side budget, uh, they they in addition cut uh, two point five million dollars from the board of education um, increase that uh, my original budget proposed, and added a two point five million dollar. Um, uh, expectation that they would get from Yale University on the revenue side. And um, and so our team has been working already uh, between the finance committee's meeting and last night's vote, both to have conversations with Board of Alders leadership uh, and, uh, and also to uh, prepare for um, how to manage the proposed cuts. Uh, I'm happy that um, there was a reduction in the proposed cuts. Uh, obviously, I, I, you know, I, I would have liked to see um, more funding for services. In addition, more funding for Board of Education. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult year, both for New Haven Public Schools and for the city side. Um, I, we are working through uh, different options that are all not very um, desirable options. And what's in, Important to me is not to, uh, or to to be straightforward and own the budget problems rather than what uh, might be tempting to do, which is you know change around some other numbers in the budget and have to deal with this in ten months uh, when we end the fiscal year with some one-time sale or something along those lines. So um, we're, we're evaluating the situation and. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be making some decisions relatively soon so we can realize the savings on whatever the decisions are that we make. But um, we're currently, we're, we're in, in talks about how to do that. Meaning staff, we're, we're discussing how to ma manage the situation. That was pretty much a non-answer, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, I think it's been 24 hours though, so. <laughs> <laughs> they, probably, they probably get more substantive <laughs> after a, a couple. Yeah, minutes. give me give me a give me another day or two. So you just uh, you mentioned how much um, federal funds uh, the hospital is going to get over its five properties or five hospitals, and the city at this point in comparison is three million. Is that? Uh, so we so let me correct. We we've gotten around f I believe four million from HUD. Board of Education has received eight or will receive eight million. That's COVID specific. Um, the four million that we've received through ESG, CDBG, and HOPWA, which are all HUD-related funds, um, are specific to um, expenses related to COVID-19. So they do not help us, other than a small percentage of administrative fees, uh, cover any existing expenses of, in, of the city's budget. Um, so they don't help us address, in particular, the revenue problems that COVID-19 has exacerbated. And my understanding is on the Board of Education side, the $8 million or a little bit over $8 million is also designated to COVID-19 related expenses. So, um, you know, the, these, uh, the, the federal support doesn't address the, the very, very challenging uh, issues that have been systemic in our budget that have, have become worse because of COVID. I'm hopeful and always optimistic that we're going to get more support to address the revenue side from the federal government that COVID-19 has, uh, has uh, inflamed as far as the challenges go. And no revision. I mean, uh, Senator Blumenthal had a pretty high estimate of how much the city was going to get. No revisions on that. Um, I th from, uh, my, my sense is just up to the Senate now. You know, that was Congress's first, uh, first right. go at it, first proposal is up to the Senate. So it was a pretty high figure that he was estimating for New Haven. But. We'll take it. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Go ahead, Paul. 
So there's talk underway to have some in form of in-person graduation, at least some high schoolers drive through. Can we hear a little about that? Dr. Tracy? You're on mute. Oh, there you go. Well, um, okay. So yes, how are you doing? We, we have great plans for graduation um, for our students. As we have been saying all along that we will ensure that our seniors get um, some form of graduation. So there are plans in place right now for graduation. Um, there's consideration around um, even having, having drive-through type graduation what that form will look like will be varied by schools. So today we had the high school principals on and having conversation around what that will look like in their schools. We are looking for a level of consistency though, so that one school is not doing something to outdo the other, but that there's a level of consistency. And so that's what we left them off with today. So yes, there's graduation. We're also planning for our seniors to um, put signs up on, on their lawn or in front of their houses or wherever they need to put that. Um, so those signs are being made to be distributed to all our seniors, wherever they live, whether in the suburbs or here in New Haven proper. We also have um, a motorcade that we are planning for the 5th of um, June with our families, a motorcade for our seniors. And um, we collaborated with the mayor and his team to ensure that that happens. And that is something exciting we're looking forward to. Um, I've seen one of those signs. <laughs> we just put a <laughs> banner next door to me. this morning uh, on City Hall as well. By that thinking. So, and, and also, um, we, um, I just want to give some good news that just came to me in terms of our graduation rate. Um, that's connected to graduation. Our graduation rate um, is up by some points. It last year was 70, the, the year before it was 78.9 78 78 and now it's at 80.9 with HSC showing a 13.5 growth in their graduation rate, which is awesome. So that just came to me on text. <laughs> So we, we want to see our seniors graduate and we're also planning um, for making sure that there's a summer school component for our seniors who need to make up some credits here and there. So that those things are in, in the works. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Tracy. Um, Director Bond, let me know that uh, we had over 100 people tested on the New Haven Green this morning, um, the, thanks to the work of um, Director Bond and Dr. Murphy. Any other questions? Can I? Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, thank you, guys. I have a quick question um, because Paul and Mary both asked uh, the two questions I had. Um, I wanted to follow up with the Board of Education for the eight million that's coming for um, COVID relief. If Dr. Tracy might be able to um, elaborate on where how that's going to be used, and then how the two point five million dollar cuts from the budget that was just passed might impact you guys. So thank you. Um, let me say this, as Kyle. I, okay, so let me say, um, we, as the mayor had alluded to before, that eight million plus that we're getting cannot help our general funds. Those are very COVID specific. We have to put things into training. We have to put things into um, probably PPE, social emotional learning system for, for our students coming back. and some other more granular things that they have in the grant. Of course, we don't have it yet. We have to write for it. There has to be an application process. We have yet to receive the application. We have to apply for that before it comes into our coffers. Um, and the impact of the $2.5 million, it's gonna be a great impact on our side because remember, we have presented that we have a $10.8 million deficit the mayor has so graciously offered to help us with 3.5. Of that 10 million deficit, we had already made proposal of some mitigation plans for the rest of the 7 million. So now not getting that compounds what next we have to do. We are looking at a number, we look, we're analyzing, reanalyzing where we are and looking at what else can we 
cut if there's anything to be cut because everyone knows that we have been sharing that our budget is primarily staff. Our budget is at least 70 to 75% staff, a large part in transportation, special education tuition out of, out of um, district tuition cost are some drivers for what we have. So, and our board has already said, and in the past we cannot, and we know we cannot cut from the classroom. Because, and with COVID now, that complicates the matter. If they're talking about 10 students to a classroom, then how can we cut staff when we're gonna actually need more staff to accommodate that type of learning situation? So it's posing some difficulties to us. So we're waiting to see what else do we need to do? Some people suggest that we close buildings at this time. You can't close any buildings. That would be you know, some, somewhat chaotic after just going through a magnet process. So, but we are analyzing where we are. Thank you. Um, and then uh, Mayor Elliker, one last question for you. Um, the 2.5 billion that was expected um, from Yale that was worked into the budget, um, is that in addition to what they already contribute? Um, I'm just wondering what the thought process was from including that if it's already been kind of at a stalemate with Yale being willing to give more to kind of expect on this 2.5? So that's a question for the Board of Alders. Um, okay. I included what Yale had committed to the city, uh, which was $1 million, a little bit over $1 million more than what they contributed last year. Um, and the Board of Alders uh, added $2.5 million to that number, um, which Yale has not committed to. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks. Go ahead, Paul. Are you planning cuts? Are you going to plan the cuts that they ordered? Or are you going to add that $2.5 million, which is fictional? Or are you going to wait till nine months in and say, well, we never got the $2.5 million more cuts now? That's a good question that we're struggling <laughs> with right now. Okay. To be continued. Got any advice there? you have any advice for us? Yes. I think you're not getting the money. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> go ahead, Mary. Go ahead. This is this is going off the rails here. It's going off the rails. Go ahead. Maybe we could maybe we could have this be the last question. Yeah, this is for Dr. Tracy. Uh, in, in answer to Paul's question, there was one um, I didn't quite get the last part you were talking about. Um, I just couldn't hear it. I don't think. Can you hear me? Doctor, you're talking about Dr. Tracy's answer or what? Uh, yeah, the first, I think the first question she answered, Paul, or she just left. She just left. She just thinks she's going to unmute. She's on a remote camera. Oh, okay. I think she just left. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mary. Never had anybody walk out, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that was. That's a good strategy. I didn't think about that as a way to not answer a question. It was kind of a vague question anyways. <laughs> My, Michael, it looks like you, were you waving your hand or? No, okay. Dr. Dr. Tracy, are you up for one final question for Mary O'Leary? You're on mute. I'm here. Okay. My tech right. person left and so I. <laughs> oh, okay. That is Go so ahead. funny. No, I didn't Go. leave. What was your question, Mary? You know what, I think it's too vague at this point. I, when you were, Paul asked a question and you answered it. I heard two parts of it and I couldn't hear the last of it. So, but is it about graduation or what was it? I think it was about graduation. Um, was it about graduate? About do you want to hear about graduation? Is that what you're asking, Mary? Uh, you know what? I could. I'll just send you. I'll send you something. Um, send me something and I'll respond to it. All right. I thank don't you. Remember what I said before. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if I remember and you remember, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, everybody. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Thank you care. so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.